Okay, first, you can download any video on your iPhone. Let's pick this Instagram reel. You hit share and then click on R download. And that will download this video into your photos gallery. Just hit allow once and now go to your photos. And there you go, the last one, that's the reel. Now this works using a shortcut. So click on the link in the description and just install the shortcut, go through these prompts and that's it. Okay, next, I can send a WhatsApp message to any phone number that is not a contact on my phone. So I just enter the country code, the phone number and hit start chat and there you go. It's a brilliant shortcut that again, you can download from the link in the description. Now, once that's done, go into Spotlight Search and look for the shortcuts app and then look for open in WhatsApp shortcut. And now just click over here and say add to home screen. It just gets added as a widget. And now when you tap on it, all you have to do is type in the country code and the phone number and that's it. Now, did you know that I could multi-select text messages by just swiping down using two fingers? Or I can do that for files or even when selecting multiple notes or even multiple reminders. It's a lot faster and honestly, it looks pretty cool. Next, you know you can automatically stop music playback or video playback on your iPhone by just setting up a timer. To do this, go into clock, set the timer and then click on when timer ends and now go all the way down and select stop playing and then just go back and start the timer. And after those 11 minutes have passed, your music or video will stop playing on its own. Oh, and by the way, if you go into the control center and long press on the timer icon, you could just go up or down to increase or reduce the timer value and then hit start. Now let's talk about some screenshotting tools on the iPhone, which I think is super. So once you take a screenshot, tap the plus icon. Use magnifier to bring someone's attention to a specific part within the screenshot. You can change the magnification as well. And then you can use opacity to further highlight that magnified part. You can also draw a shape if you want to, you know, sort of annotate the screenshot in any way. Then you can copy and delete the screenshot. So that way it doesn't pile up in your photos gallery, but you could go ahead and paste it on any app and just send it to someone. And hey, if you don't want to do anything, just long press on the screenshot and you'll get options to directly share on any app or with any person, much like Android. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but let's say you highlight some text. You could just pinch in with three fingers to copy and then pinch out with three fingers to paste. And you can paste images, and you could also go to your iPad and pinch out uh, to paste that image. It's pretty simple, just use three fingers and pinch in to copy, and then pinch out to paste. By the way, if you want to quickly get to the top of a scrolling list, just tap the top edge of the iPhone, and this works in any app. You know, I have all difficult to remember or lengthy phrases, turned into shortcuts. And so if I want to type out my tax ID, I just type tax ID and the keyboard shows the tax ID right there. Or let's say I want to share my address real quick. I just type ADDR and I get the recommendation to actually type out my address. I also use this to remember my credit card number. So I just type CC1 and the keyboard recommends my uh, credit card number, which I can just refer and insert wherever I need to. So to set this up, go into settings and search for text replacement and then click on text replacement. And here's all the text replacements that I have created, but it's really easy to create your own. Just click on plus and, you know, give it a phrase and assign that phrase to a shortcut, which if you type on the keyboard, you'll get the phrase. Pretty simple. Now, have you guys ever tried to long press on the space bar of your keyboard? It converts the keyboard into a trackpad, which then you can use to navigate between lines and paragraphs of text. And obviously this makes it very easy for you to edit between letters because on the iPhone, you can't just tap and get the cursor between letters like you can on Android smartphones. All right, next, there's an inbuilt spirit level measurement tool on your iPhone. So if your TV does not look straight to you, just use your iPhone. Now to access this, look for measure app on your iPhone and then click on the level tab. It uses the phone's sensors to give you that sense of leveling. And then, you know, with this, you can level up a tripod that you're trying to use outside or a photo frame that you're trying to hang on the wall. Next, now on the iPhone, you can screenshot a whole web page and save it as a PDF file. So just take a screenshot and then click on the full page tab. And now if you see and you scroll down, it's the entire web page. And then click on the share icon and then you can either, you know, you can see it's a PDF document and you can just save it as a file uh, on your iCloud or on your local storage. 
Now, let's say you want to reorganize your home screens. Do you pick up every single app icon and then move it to another page one by one? That actually is not the right way to do it. So here's what you do instead. Tap on one icon, long press on it, and then start pressing the other ones. It creates a group which you can then move together in one go and drop them to another page. You can do this for photos as well. So, you know, I collect those photos and then I add them into Gmail as an attachment. Or I could go into files and select the files the same way and then drop them and upload them onto Google Drive like this. And obviously this will help you organize at a much faster speed. Okay, next. If you like to listen to ambient sounds like ocean waves or rain or even white noise, they're all inbuilt in your iPhone. So to access these, go into settings and then scroll down to accessibility and then hit audio visual. Turn on background sounds and just select a sound from any of these. And you know, these sounds are great if you want to just relax or calm down, bring down anxiety or even try to fall asleep. Now, did you know your iPhone can notify you when your doorbell rings or if someone knocks at the door or even when a baby is crying? And so if you're watching a movie with your phones on, this is a super feature that may be of some help. So to enable this, go into accessibility settings and then into sound recognition. Turn it on and then you can turn on specific sounds that you want to monitor. And that's pretty much it. And you can see there are quite a few uh, critical ones like baby crying. And I think that one could be really helpful for young mothers. And so think about this. You can just keep your phone next to your infant that's sleeping and you can step out. And if they cry, you can get a notification on your watch. Pretty cool. Now this one's really good. Do you see how I've been able to lock my iPhone to just stay in the YouTube music app? I can't exit this app. I can't go into any other app. And this is great if you're giving to, you know, a friend, a colleague, or even to a baby to watch a video or something. And then to remove the restriction, you just have to triple tap the lock key, put in a password that only you know, and then end the guided access. And that's what it's called, guided access. And see, I can get out. So to enable this or set this up, go into accessibility settings, go into guided access, and then just turn this on. And then if you want to use it for any app, just triple tap your lock button. That's it. Just one piece of advice. When you turn on guided access, and if you try to lock your screen, uh, lock your iPhone, it's gonna take half a second more. So that delay, if you don't like it, turn off guided access. Next, if you're using your phone with just one hand, right? And you can't reach the top half of your phone, just pull down slightly from the mid bottom of your screen and it'll bring the top half to the lower half. And that way you can access it very easily. And it's really simple. Just slide from mid bottom and that's it. And it works on all apps, all screens, no exceptions. Next, let's say you go really deep into some setting, okay? So you go to general, then keyboards, then Gboard. And now if you have to go back, you have to tap one by one and then go one step at a time. Or you could just long press on the last one and it'll give you the entire navigation to go back wherever you want to. All right, next, play with these audio settings to improve your sound. And so within settings, go into music and then into EQ and switch to late night. And then next, go back to your search homepage, click on search and look for headphone accommodations. Right, when you click get the result, click on that. And then just set the vocal range to strong. And these settings should elevate your audio experience by a bit. All right, guys, so these were a few tips and tricks that I have realized in the last three months that I've started using the iPhone. And I thought I should share them with you. That's entirely possible that for some of you, these were really basic, but I do hope that there were a few of them in there that you didn't know of. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon, and mark all. Really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.